Welcome back from the holidays! It's been, you know, a nice restful kind of four weeks or something. So much <laughs> rest. <laughs> so much rest. But it's time to get back into battle. And if you don't know what kind of battles we're involved in, at the Card Market Feature Match, we play paper decks against each other. Yeah, because we love paper magic. And tonight, we're playing Pioneer. And we are. And we're playing your decks from the comments below. So if there's decks you want to see in the next videos in Pioneer or Modern, scroll down below. Comment the deck you want to see, either the exact deck list or the name of the archetype, and we'll play it in the future videos. And also, please, if you do like this, sub. There's no way you know that our sub button doesn't make a funny noise unless you click it. So might as well give it a go. It, it might just do that, but <laughs> yeah. For now, it's enough intro. Let's get into the actual games. Now, going through the comments to try to pick a deck I could play this week, three of you asked for Winoda. Doing me a solid favor, because if all goes well, these Matches won't take very long to edit because I usually want to win on turn three or four. The way the deck works is I play a bunch of non-human creatures like Llanowar Elves or Elvish Mystic or Prosperous Innkeeper. Don't get fooled by the framing of the art. He's actually tiny and a halfling citizen. And they will ramp into an early Winota. Then if I attack with my non-human creatures, I get to look at the top cards of my library, sixth for every non-human creature, and pick a human, put into play. Now the neat thing we're doing is, since we're playing werewolves instead of just regular humans, when it's nighttime, they trigger further humans. Usually the snowball effect means I only have to attack once or twice with a Wonona on the board, and I usually can win from there. We're, pretty, we're at playing with some pretty neat additions from Midnight Hunt. We're playing with Brutal Cathar, which will get all the blockers out of the way, and we're playing with Tovalar's Huntmaster, which is huge, and just creates more wolves that will then attack for more Winota triggers, and when I don't have Winota on the board, because I don't always have Winota on the board, I'm also playing Essica's Chariot, which is good enough to make you wonder what Essica could do with a car, because I'll just make a bunch of cats into play, I can crew, make more cats, if I have a Winota, the cats will put more triggers, it just, it goes on from there. Let's finish the game really quickly. So, the deck I'm playing today was requested so much that I couldn't really turn it down. There were like three people asking for different variations of spirits. I'm not a seasoned spirits player, but I think I get the gist of it. You know, turn one, Mausoleum, Wanderer, turn two, Supreme Phantom, turn three, keep up Spell Queller. That's how it goes. And so I will try to beat Carl today with Spirits. The deck is basically a beatdown deck that can play at instant speed a lot through Rattle Chains and Spell Queller and also Collect Company. You don't even get me started on that card. That card is just crazy. You get six mana worth of creatures for only four mana at instant speed. That's just too much value. Like you can, you can use it as a combat trick. You need some blockers. Maybe you hit a Spell Queller to fizzle your opponent's spell. Who knows? It does everything. Uh, yeah, I mean, did you bring a companion with you? I did, Carl. These, okay. These days, uh, you don't play magic without a companion. That's anymore. not a companion, is it? <laughs> it's, There's it's no way you'd hold Carl. it. <gasps> it's Isaander. That's Isaander, but yeah, I mean, that's a flesh and blood card. That is a flesh and blood I, card. I don't remember us having flesh and blood on Card Market. Well, you remembered wrongly, Carl, because Card Market <laughs> does have flesh and blood cards nowadays. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. It's a new addition, and we are the European partner. Yeah, so. we are the European partner for flesh and blood. We added the game on Card Market on Monday, and this was our exclusive spoiler. One of our two spoilers, actually. If you like flesh and blood and you haven't checked out like Card Market flesh and blood yet, you're missing out. <laughs> so you're telling me that you don't have a companion. I mean, actually, no, I, I don't have a companion. Do you, you no know companion? Did you not come to win? How, how I mean. I don't do, have a companion either. Uh, yeah, so what did you come here to do if I get to spin some dice. This, this is the only reason I come here every week. The best part of the video. All right. Best part of the video. Oh. Nine is pretty high. It's the best part because uh, I roll so high. Um, yeah, I'll go first. All right. But I hope your hand is competitive and enjoyable and fun. I hope so too. And then too. we have a good match. Good luck, good luck. Yeah, I mean, I can do better. I'll mulligan. I'll keep Carl. I'll keep K. This hand is full of powerful spells, but no way to trigger the one out on turn four. Even the Cathar, Yemen has to not play anything, and I don't even know if he's playing creatures that I can exile with the Cathar. So if he's playing a combo deck, which is usually Yemen's style of play, the hand just does nothing and then I lose. So I can't keep, I need some mana ramp, I need some early action. So this hand is okay. It's kind of missing something to do on turn two, a two drop, obviously. Uh, this way it just goes one into one into turn three, three drop. 
still okay. I'm gonna keep it. I think it's better than an average six card hand. All right, down to six with an extra card. Um, down to six like an ex with an extra card just sounds like regular. <laughs> just magic. sounds like cheating. Yeah. Um, it's as silly as the other hand, but I don't want to go down to five. So we'll. Tuck this one away. All right. Okay, well this is the early action we were talking about, but it has no great kaboom, no great finish. But that's okay, we can draw those. And one thing that helps is if I go Lanoir, Lanoir, Ranger class, then I can start looking at the top cards of my library. I can start attacking with my wolf, making it bigger. There's just more chance I hit something to do with this. I'll kick things off with a branch lock pathway. All right. Into Lanny and the Lanoir elf. That's an elf. That Druid. is an elf. All right, my turn. Yep. I'll untap my zero permanence. <laughs> I'll play a botanical sanctum yep. and a mausoleum wanderer. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. Have you that's... guessed what deck I'm on yet? Spirits. I assume. Maybe. Oh, or very poor deck building or... <laughs> choices. I will draw for turn. I could attack here. See if Yaman would block. But Yaman's a good player. He's not going to block. He knows if I'm attacking, I don't need the land or else. He's not going to trade. Let's just develop our board, play our Ranger class. If we have more mana of dorks on the board, we can do more things with Ranger class in the future. Try to dig for a win con. I won't, but if I attack, would you have blocked? I was thinking about the same thing, Really? Carl. I thought- Anyways, let's, 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 let's not get ahead <laughs> of ourselves. I'm going to play this land or else. <laughs> And then play a Crackron Pathway. Oh, sorry, this is not a Lanor Elf. No, it's We're an ready to enter the Twilight Zone. Yeah, yeah. Almost the same card, different name, different art. And I'm gonna play a Ranger class. All right. Uh, I will get myself a Wolf. This is best Grizzly Bears. True. And um, pass the turn to you. All right, I will untap, draw. Off pathway. All right. So Ranger class might become scary later on because Carl does seem to be on some sort of creature-based strategy. Um, maybe I will have to take it out with the Skyclave apparition. But before I do that, I will let Carl invest some mana into it, and I will cast a Phantom Supreme, a Supreme Phantom. Ooh, that's the spirit. That's a spirit. That gets plus one, plus one. That gets plus one, plus one. Attack for I three. I take three, and this blocks my ladder else forever. 17. 17 First is blood. First blood indeed. Go. I'll untap. Yep. I'll drop a turn. <laughs> um, I will pump up my ranger class. Oh, wow. All right. All level right. two. Yes, it is level two. Um, I'm going to declare attacks. Yep. My dungeon master said it's allowed, so I'm putting a counter on my uh, wolf because of the ranger class. 17 each. 17 each. Um. Do you, do you think I have a lot of Lanor Elves? Um, I mean, you have one. I can... <laughs> oh, okay, well, now I have... Maybe more, all right. <laughs> Technically, okay, your turn. All right, uh, I'll untap, and I'll draw. And then I gotta think. Okay, we're not doing much, but we have enough mana on board. The next turn, we can pump Ranger class. So if what we drew isn't powerful enough, we have a chance to get a Winota off the top of our deck and then attack and start triggering it. So now Carl has already invested mana into that Ranger class. I could play the Imperian Eagle just to push through as much damage as possible, but I feel like now might be a good time to take out the Ranger class, especially since even if I play the Eagle, uh, my attack is not quite lethal next turn. If my attack was lethal next turn with the Eagle, I think I would play it. I'm gonna play an untapped Halothon. Oh, you're taking two, Down helping 15. me. 15. And I'll carry oh, no. the Skyclave oh, Apparition. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take that yeah, Ranger I figured. class <laughs> off the board. And then I'm gonna swing at you for three. Can't block that. Down to 14. 14. Go ahead. I needed that Ranger class. All right, I'll draw for. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, oh, this, this wouldn't be so bad if only I could take two. Oh no. <laughs> like a Winota. Oh no. No, nope, nope, I am not playing elves. Uh, this is Winota, joiner of forces. Um, she is a legendary creature, human warrior. Um, whenever a non-human creature I control attacks, which is 
All, all the creatures that can read the control. Um, I look at the top six cards of my library. I may put a human creature card from among them onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Not only that, but it gains indestructible until the end of turn. I put the rest on the bottom of my library. Impressive. It is. Um, so I'm down to 12. Oh, now it makes sense why Carl was playing all these bad creatures. But um, I guess now I have to get lucky and see Carl miss a bunch of triggers. I'd like to declare attack. All right. Hit it. OK, I'll swing with all four of these. OK. I get four triggers. Hit it. Trigger number one. Yep. Reminds me of Etherworks Marvel. It is, but four, four of them. It's as if she's just going around with an Etherworks Marvel, <laughs> like spreading that cash. You get an activation. <laughs> you get an activation. Um, I will reveal a brutal Cathar with the first one. Yep. When it enters the battlefield, I would like to exile the Phantom. And it's tapped at attacking. Trigger number two. Yep. Oh, we're pulling out the big guns. I would like to put uh, a Tovalar's Huntmaster. Um, you might recall the ability from uh, Grave Titan. I do. I'll enter the battlefield with two wolves. A Grave Titan that grows. That grows. I will get another trigger. I will get a Tovalar Thire Overlord. When I was trying to type this up earlier, it was impossible for me to not write the word toolbar. <laughs> Gravely needs a Xanax. He seems very upset. Um, it's a whenever. It's a three-three. Whenever a wolf or werewolf I control these combat damage to a player, I draw a card. I get one more trigger, and I'll reveal another Cathar. Mm, just to make sure that nothing can block. <laughs> just, it. Yeah, just, All right. Just to get full. Value, uh, so you I get, get an a illusion to token. Yep. And now, um, let's. W I would like to go to damage. Yeah, let's count up the damage here, Carl. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sixteen, nineteen. I see myself as a dead person <laughs> yeah, here. It's not gonna last any not longer. Good Next game. game. <laughs> if you're new here, we do want to tell you that. Yaman and I don't actually own the cards for every deck every week. We're not actually that wealthy. <laughs> you might think that producing these videos for card market, we're just swimming in cash. We're not. We, instead, we have a very generous sponsor for this show, Karma Crow. They're an established seller on card market for the longest time, and they lend us all the cards for every video, basically. Yeah, because they have the craziest, biggest inventory, 700,000 cards or more. So if you want a commander deck, a uh, deck for your FNM, you just Click on the link we'll put in the description below. You go to their store, pick all the cards you want, you only pay shipping once, save a bunch of money. Yeah, they send them out really quickly, and talking about really quickly, let's really quickly get back into the games. All right, leave game one behind me, focus on game two. What do I need to sideboard? I need to bring in two unsubstantiates because they delay Winota for one turn, and when I have pressure, that's all I need. Uh, two Valorous stances because they delay Winota forever because they destroy her, you know. Yeah, and one. I'll also bring in one Dramokas command because it won't deal with uh, Winota most of the time, but it will deal with most smaller creatures, so that can also delay Winota for one turn. However, that's probably the weakest card I'm bringing in here. I will be taking out um, one Rattle Chains and some Selfless Spirits and some Spectral Sailors because those simply don't fit the game plan I want to play. Rattle Chains still fairly decent because I can play at instant speed, so I can keep up Spell Queller, and if Carl doesn't play Winota for some reason, uh, then I can just flash in a Lord or something. It keeps me flexible. Okay, sideboards, now we have a few really good cards we're bringing in. We've got three Rending Volley. Now, it's a one mana snipe anything in Yaman's deck, because one mana can't be countered, so I'd like to see some Mausoleum Wanderer shenanigans, and four damage is just a Lord, usually even pumped in itself. So we're bringing it in to try to get rid of his early aggression. We're also bringing in three Palo Vito Dama da Rosa. Um, I forget the name of the actual card because we all know it's Paula just giving us some help when he's not busy winning championships. Uh, because it flies, which is super important, and if I can nab a Coco in his hand, it's basically a thought seize on a 3-1 body. Um, so we're bringing those in, we're bringing out four Essica's Chariot. Yes, I know, it's a great card but it doesn't block any of Yaman's creatures and it's just not powerful enough or fast enough if I'm on the draw. So we're taking it out for the moment, making space for those rending volleys. We're also bringing out two evolutions because yes, I know it's the other uh, Winotas in our deck, 
But if I pay three mana, sacrifice a creature, and then he spell colors it, I lose. So we're taking two of them out. Can All right, you? Carl. I, I now, think... do you have a companion? <laughs> should, should I do the same Icelander <laughs> joke again? No, they've seen it already. <laughs> they don't want to watch it again. Well, they could, they could be doing worse. You can, could... you can just skip back in the video. like. Yeah, if right you really there. liked that moment a few or, minutes no, ago. over there or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, so you don't have a companion. I do not have a companion. Still. I don't either. I will go first this time, though. Maybe that helps me against that onslaught of werewolves. That is in your favor. I will choose to go second then. Good choice. <laughs> I know. Given all the options. I will mulligan this. I will as well. No way, thanks. So this hand has the same opening as last game, but it only has lands to follow up. So uh, I'm not going to keep this one. <laughs> How dare a deck be so unkind to yeah, us? Yeah, truly. Like, what is this? We sleeve them up. Yeah, we we them. treated them so well. Yeah, and they just leave us hanging. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hopefully now they know what we deserve. M mine does. Mine does as well. You know All what? Right. This is the kind of hand we were hoping for. As I said, Dromoka's Command, not the best card in the matchup. Valorous Stance is very good at interacting with Minota, however. The only thing I'm kind of missing here is a bit more pressure. All right, you ready, Carl? I have to make a sacrifice to the deck. Oh, I already I'm did that. I already did that. Down to six. Yeah, I am now ready. Play tap Temple Garden and pass the turn. It's like we came with the same deck, Yamin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are we doing? We're not even. Oh yeah, we are playing both green white. All right, it's your turn. Talking about pressure, Collected Company is the perfect card for that. It will let me get all the pressure on board I need. I'm feeling good. Uh, Botanical Sanctum, followed up by a Phantom Supreme. Here's how our paths diverge. I will play a Spying Vantage, followed by a Prosperous Innkeeper. All right. And as business is booming, I get a treasure. Of course you do. I'll pass the turn to you. All right, untap, draw. Play another Sanctum and attack you for one. <laughs> I see you really coming out of the gate strong. <laughs> uh, 19. All right, Skyclave Apparition is kind of awkward because I do not have double white but I'm sure that will come along, so let's just keep going. I'm still not being hyper aggressive here, so this company is important to pull my game plan together. Uh, I'll pass the turn. Okay, I'll draw. Okay, I'll take Hero <laughs> Jubilock. Um, no, I will not take that risk. Um, I'll play an Inspire Advantage. Yep. So Yamin is clearly holding up Spell Queller here, and I don't want my Winota under it. So I have a few options. If I play the Voice of Resurgence and he counters it, then I can do my other stuff, but playing the Spell Binder, if it resolves, sees what I have to play around. And if it doesn't, the Voice of Resurgence gives me more options to double spell depending on what I draw. So we'll go with the Spell Binder here. And play Paolo himself. Do I gain a life? Uh, you do gain a lot. So I'm letting the uh, Spellbinders trigger resolve here without fighting or anything, um, because I'm hoping that Carl picks one of the cheaper instants, because setting company up to six mana basically just exiles the card from my hand, because getting to six mana is a tough ask here, and I really need this company to resolve to keep up the pressure. Do I get to look at your hand? Um, I guess you do. Very Clement, ooh. There's so much for removal. It's just like removal.hand. Um, I'll make the collected company cost more. It costs six now. Yep. I'll attack for one. Um, yes, sure. <laughs> okay. Um, you're at 19. I am. Um, and I'll pass the turn to you. Uh, sure. Yep. I'll untap. All right. I'll take my draw. Okay, so here's the second white source, um, but I'm just gonna keep up both of my instants still. I will play a Boulder Loft Pathway. Wow, good thing I picked the Collected Company. <laughs> True. And I guess I will pass the turn. Okay, Yamin is just trying to keep up removal ad nauseum forever. So what I'm gonna do, I'll play the Voice of Resurgence here. He's not gonna kill it on his turn because it's gonna 
take too many resources. So what he's probably gonna do is tap out next turn for the Skyclave Apparition so I don't get the token, and then I get to slam a Winota and get a spin. And here is where we snowball. I'll untap. Yep. Suspicious Yemen. Yemen? Yep. I have some questions. Um, I mean, yes, go ahead and ask. <laughs> Question number one. Um, would you like to respond to my voice of resurgence? Uh, that's an annoying question to ask someone, Carl. I'm sorry. He's a, he's a tough one, the business moves. Uh, yeah. Oh, such an annoying card. Sure, Carl. I will put a plus one, plus one counter on this. Okay, you get one? And also fight your innkeeper. Oh, so I'm not gaining one life? Nah. Okay, that happens. And now I get the voice of resurgence? You do. Um, I don't have any follow-up questions because I can't gain any life anymore. <laughs> uh, so those triggers are no longer relevant and my spellbinder can no longer attack. Rough. I'll play a tapped uh, Sacred Foundry yep. and pass the turn All right. I will untap and see what's on top of my deck. Sure. Uh, I will play a Skyclave Apparition and yeah, get rid of that Voice of Resurgence. That makes sense. I don't get the counter for it. And then I'll pass the turn. I will untap. Yep. Draw for turn. Pretty stoked for how this is going to go. Um, no, it's not, it's not, it's not Winota herself, uh, but I will attack this treasure. Yep. And play Tovalor's Heartmaster. Hard right. cast. Yep. That's how you do it. I will get rid of this treasure and trade it in for two wolves. That These are some very derpy looking <laughs> wolves. Yes, they are. I, I feel like that's a good deal. Trading one treasure for two wolves. And a 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> um, and... I dare you to just keep mana up on your turn. <laughs> um, I still can't attack with the Elite Spellbinder because that's a huge phantom. Yep. Um, so I'll pass the turn to you. All right. I'll untap. Yep. I'll take my draw. Okay. Huntmaster itself is not a problem. That's what we have Valorous Stance for. What worries me a bit is Carl just playing it into the Valorous Stance that he knows about. But on the other hand, what else is he supposed to do with it? Maybe he has a second one in hand. I'm, I'm kind of worried, but at the same time, right now, it's still looking okay for us. Yeah, that Huntmaster has to go, obviously. It's exiled or killed? It's only uh, destroyed, okay. not exiled. And then, in addition... Ooh, tapping out. I will also cast a Watcher of the Spheres. If it was night, it would now be day. It would now become day. Though it's not a spirit, um, I will pass the turn. All right. I'll untap. Yep. I'll draw for turn. Yep. Good thing these are wolves. I would like to cast a Winota. Yes, sure. <laughs> All right. Um, they're going to get eaten, at least one of them, which Hopefully. is usually weird because the wolves usually do the eating. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spin the other, other world's marvel. All right. I'll attack with my two wolves. Yep. I will trigger once. Yep. Uh, this is a weird one. I get a Avabark Caretaker. Oh. Uh, Hexproof. <laughs> At the beginning of combat on my turn, it's too late. Uh, I put two plus one plus one counters on another target creature I control. If she flips, everything gets Hexproof. She's attacking you. All right. Um, I'll get another trigger on the second wolf see if we get there. You know what, Yamin? We do. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I'll have the Cathar into the battlefield, which will exile the Phantom. Oh, that's brutal, no. That is. Oh, these have indestructible. They do. Uh, these don't, but. Yep. Um. I guess I will have to trade in my two creatures for you to, to your two wolves. Okay, that's a trade I will take happily. You'll take six. Yep. And I get a two-two. You get an illusion token. You go down to 13. Yep. This is exile? Yep. And I'll play this layer of the Hydra tap. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And I'll pass the turn over to you. That was a good turn. I'll untap. Okay. Things are not looking great, Crown. No, they're not. I'll draw. I will. 
play a henge gate pathway. One step closer to Coco. And then I will tap out for another Skyclave apparition. Oh. Which exiles your Cathar. Spirits versus werewolves. Yeah. Isn't that what uh, Twilight is about? It is what Twilight is about. Either that or abs. Um, this enters the battlefield again. Yep, it does. And I'll pass the turn. Okay, I do get another few spins. You do. Uh, no, just I, don't, one. I, I just get just, one. Just one, but still, that's enough. I'll draw for turn. Do you have any cards in hand, Yavin? I don't. I feel like this is going to be pretty good. I'm going to play a Brass of Pathway. I'm going to pay f six. Maybe yep. this is a five five. Yep. I will declare attacks. Yeah. At the beginning of my attack step, I get to put two plus one plus one counters on Winota. Sure. I'll declare attacks. Yep. I'll attack with a bunch of humans and non-humans. I'll trigger twice. We'll do this really fast because I don't think we need <laughs> to do it so much. Uh, they will also exile this and then... Oh, so you get another illusion token. I get another illusion token, <laughs> but that's okay. We probably don't, don't touch the tokens yet. Um, I will also whiff. Um, still, will, how would you like to block? I would. Does this have trample? It doesn't. In that case, I'll block there. You'll take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Uh, I think that makes me dead, Carl. Good games. Good games. <laughs> Carl. Yes, Yaman. You were so unlucky that game. It's I don't recall it going that way exactly. Uh, honest, I, I mean, that final Winota trigger just missing, how unlikely is that? Oh no, how did I ever win despite that backbreaking Winota with? Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I don't know either, I don't know either. <laughs> if you'd like to see me win next week, uh, submit a good deck list down in the comments below. If you'd like to see me lose next week, just submit a really <laughs> bad one. <laughs> Who knows, yeah, it's all open to you. But the one thing we do want you to do is like and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. We do actually really, really rely on on that feedback to keep on making more and more of these. They take a lot of time. In the meantime, we'll see the decks you submit because we'll be playing them next, next week. week.